Yeah, it's a super great day uh, to represent Spin over here just after the opening event yesterday. It was a kind of a really milestone for, for Spin Nova, and we were uh, long waiting for that specific day. Um, so the production is here, and I'm relating to Marika that the, the trust on the innovation, there are happening many things around, um, but innovations need to be taken to some level to scale that uh, investor has the trust, the industry has the trust uh, from very many different perspective, not from the business point of view, uh, also, also the solution th that specific innovation would like to um, provide. So considering all those things, I think um, Spinnova has uh, shown a, a great example for the industry and especially for the you know, innovative companies. I would um, walk you through um, what we are doing. You may know to some extent about Spinnova, uh, but I would also try to relate that how this innovation is bringing something for the uh, industry. So I have been asked to talk about innovating textiles uh, through new innovation. As Spinnova is a, is a new innovation, uh, it has, I think, many things to offer from the uh, innovation perspective and uh, also the final product perspective, with, which I'll be touching. I would like to start by highlighting the whole thing, what um, Spinnova offers. There are quite a, a few things. Um, related to this innovation, related to this solution, uh, but uh, I try to keep it uh, in a simple level so that we can touch from the beginning up to the end. So first of all, Spinnova are uh, able to use sustainable raw material. What does that mean? Uh, uh, predominantly, we are using um, wood as a principal raw material. Uh, but we have the possibility also to use other raw materials uh, like agri-waste, textile waste, um, etc. Uh, I will be touching that. The process of making the fiber, that's our main product, um, is mechanical. We know the textile industry is very chemically dominant, the processes especially. Um, if we talk about the fiber processing, if we talk about the further uh, textile processing. So that's a good thing that we have um, uh, so shown some way that almost the same material uh, or raw material can be used and you can produce an end product by using a mechanical process, unlike the chemical processes. And the whole production is uh, zero waste production. I will be touching also that, that how it is possible. And then when we come to that, after all this innovation process, uh, et cetera, when you get the product, uh, how it touches feel, aesthetics. Um, I would say from my background, from the textile industry, that it, 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 it gives a true natural um, possibility of, of an alternative to true natural fiber, meaning that cotton, linen, and et cetera, et cetera, these, these uh, kind of fibers. Um, unlike other man-made cellulosic fibers, those are uh, made out of natural raw material, um, but I think if we go deep into the textiles, often they are not providing perhaps the properties that we look from a a natural fiber. And, and at the end of the life, it's biodegradable and, and recyclable. So these are something from the beginning up to the end, uh, the Spinnova solution provides that we believe. I'll be touching one by one. I have to be also mindful about the time, I believe. Um, so this is, uh, I was trying to, um, as, as, as I'm responsible for, for sustainability, um, at Spinnova, I tried to kind of uh, compose it in, in one slide, uh, the whole, whole sustainability thing. I don't know how much I was able to do it nicely, but I wanted to see it uh, from the input and output point of view. On the input side, 
uh, we have a completely waterless process, meaning that uh, we don't use in the process any water because we do not have a chemical process. As I mentioned, it's a mechanical process. We provide, uh, uh, make the fiber mechanically. The spinning process is a mechanical process. So fortunately, we don't need to use um, any chemical. As we are not using any chemical, we don't need to use water as a carrier for those chemicals. And when you use chemical, of course, you have to clean those afterwards. So we don't need to uh, use water also re for rinsing. That's why uh, it's, we call it a waterless process. And then the raw material, of course, have to be traceable. And we need to know from where these are, these are coming. So we use, uh, at the moment when we are talking about wood-based pulp, it's only FSC or PFC certified raw material that we can trace back. Um, then after all those things, uh, what we get is a climate positive fiber. I will be touch base a bit on that. Um, and then most importantly, it's a, it's a, the fiber is very much recyclable. It's a cellulosic fiber. Uh, it should be recyclable. Uh, that's, I think, uh, it's not, nothing fancy. But what is uh, very important that it is maintaining the quality, meaning that um, after recycling, you are getting the fiber quality almost same level as the virgin fiber. The reason is that we produce the fiber out of microfibrillated cellulose. So we, we go to microfibril level and then we connect again. Um, and, and, and that is why we are not dependent on the fiber length or something like that. Uh, that's give us the opportunity uh, actually to get it to the a high quality recycled fiber. So we can call it a upcycled fiber. And of course, it's a cellulosic fiber, biodegradable. To be, to be mentioned. And the whole process is waste-free. As I mentioned about the, there is no water. And uh, the yield is 100%. So in the process, whatever we are putting in, coming out as a fiber, so there is no solid waste as such. Um, so that is why it's an, it's an waste-free production. I have been talking about that it's a climate positive fiber. So we did, um, the export LCAs um, if by the ex ex external parties. Uh, what we have seen that in our process, of course, we use renewable energy and so on. Um, uh, so, so we in our process we don't produce any 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 footprint carbon footprint. Um, but of course, we are when we are do, doing the LCA, we are doing it from the plant to fiber, so cradle to gate. And that's, that's actually uh, uh, providing some kind of footprint in the logistics, in the, in the pulp production, etc. That's about 1.2, that what Spinova Fiber have. But on top of it, what we are doing, that we are actually, Spinova process is um, generating quite a much heat, which is called as an excess heat. And that excess heat, uh, with a state of the art technology, we can get back through the heat pump system. And that heat is given back to the district heating network, which actually replacing to barn whatever the raw material they are using at the moment. They are, with, I think, using some peat or something like that. And that saves 2.4 units of CO2 emission, which means that if we produce spin nova fiber, one kilo of spin nova fiber, and keep in the store, we basically storing, saving 2.4 units of CO2 emission. So that's how we are saying uh, at the claim of climate, climate positive fiber. And our factory is emission free one that, that has been, just came out yesterday, uh, officially. And, and uh, very interestingly, we, we didn't need to get an environmental permit for our factory. That also proves that um, there is basically no, no such waste. Um, then a bit touching on the, on the process. I have been already touching much. So on the left-hand side, there are the raw materials that we are using, wood, wood pulp. Uh, we are using the wood spin factory that has been inaugurated yesterday. Um, that's 
predominantly the wood, wood pulp um, based, but we have been already doing some proof of concept with uh, agricultural waste, uh, textile waste, um, even leather waste. We have a project actually uh, which um, converts the leather processing waste or tannery waste to um, fiber using the same Spinova technology. So that's a protein fiber. Till now, what we have to told all about cellulosic fiber, but we do uh, utilize um, the same technology to get protein fiber. So it's the Spinova is a spinning technology. Um, we can utilize many different kind of feed stock raw material to produce many different kind of fibers. And this is the whole thing is happening that we, we get the pulp, we do the mechanical refining, we produce microfibrillated cellulose, MFC. That's our main raw material. And that is passing through the spinning nozzle. Uh, we do some sort of drying and that's come out as a dry fiber. And then rest of the processes, so it's shown as a textile um, process, but we can use the fiber also in a non-oven um, composites, etc. Then, uh, very briefly about the major difference, I have been touching already the mechanical process and the chemical process. The man-made cellulosic fibers are basically producing the um, um, uh, through through the through very extensive chemical processes. So that's the major difference that Spinova provides. Um, and 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 uh, the benefits are very very clear that how the mechanical process can basically um, differentiate uh, and and make it much more sustainable. So using the same raw material that uh, is used in a man-made cellulosic uh, fiber process, we can make it much better uh, product, much better sustainable product. Uh, we using the Spinova process. A bit about the uh, raw material, so I, I touch, touched that, that we using FSC certified or PFC certified raw material, uh, but uh, basically we can use almost any kind of plant-based raw material, meaning that if you can convert to pulp, we can convert to um, microfibril and uh, then to, to fiber. And then um, I already touched that, that we can use the tannery waste, which is called wet blue, and that also can be used to produce protein fiber uh, using the same technology. And then a bit about the um, recycling of spinnova fiber because it's a cellulosic fiber. We can disintegrate if it's a it's if it's a, in a in a cloth, in a textile. If it's a blended with some other fiber, we can disintegrate the spinnova and get back and. Um, basically can, can produce the spinnova fiber again. Uh, we can take actually other uh, cellulosic raw material stream, but uh, at the moment our main focus is to take the spinnova share and to recycle that uh, while maintaining the quality. And that's actually the, how, how the all whole the recycling thing works. Here I wanted to also connecting the industry, not, not on the spinnova, that how we can be part of this whole ecosystem um, in, the, in the recycling. We are not a directly uh, recycling focused innovation, but we can utilize the other recycling innovations in a very um, interesting way. Uh, first of all, in the, in the left hand side, what I could say that the textile sorting and everything, uh, I think we will hear a lot about the textile recycling, but when we get a open fiber, actually um, we, we, can, we can convert it to, we can uh, do the fractionation and can convert it to MFC. But on the other hand side, when um, there are also other um, chemical recyclings uh, where they are producing the pulp out of cellulose, uh, that also can be used in Spinnova technology very easily. So we can get that uh, recycled pulp uh, from the textile waste and using the same Spinnova technology, spinning technology to get, get the fiber out. But I think, I thought it's, it's, a, it's a better way to produce the fiber because those pulp can go to further chemical process 
um, to produce viscose, to produce lyosol. Instead of producing viscose or lyosol, if we could do it through spin nova, you, you ca could really add value, I, I believe. So this is more or less about the technology uh, in the recycling. And this, this is the factory. This is, sorry, it's still old. There's some snow still. Uh, I couldn't take a picture from yesterday. Um, but it's more or less looks like this, and the factories in Ivascula. Uh, this is our aim, where we want to reach. Uh, finally, we were able to inaugurate, but we, we, this is just the first step. And uh, showing to the industry that this is a technology that is not in the lab scale, not in the pilot scale, but in the industrial scale. And that's, that's actually a big milestone also for the industry, not only for Spin Nova. I will be um, ending up by showing some of the pictures um, uh, with some of the brands as, as, as we are a public company. Uh, we, what we are doing publicly that only we can share. So these are some of the names where we have been actually uh, producing some product directly and, and, and showing. I will not go through this. Uh, if there is some other questions come, I will be uh, happy to answer. But these are, uh, in a nutshell, in different kinds of applications where we have been using. So it's not only textiles we have been, been able to use in composites also, uh, and even in textile in different kinds of uh, application. Uh, in order to what came out um, in, in the market, uh, I have been trying to show some of the some of those which has been already reached to the consumer. So here, one of the nice healthy um, jacket that's that's been out uh, recently. We have done earlier also the bestseller, some very nice looking Jack and Jones trouser that has been also in the in the market. And here we are not talking about some digital collection, a real collection that consumers have been have been utilizing Marimekko um, before, before the bestseller has been coming out and then Adidas, we have been able to also make a nice hoodie uh, that, ha that actually fulfills the performance required by them. And then uh, before uh, last year, I think at the beginning, we have got also some Orchid, Orchid um, overshirt uh, from H&M Group. So these are some of the example. Bergans, of course, one of the things we have been doing very long time and, and, and from the very, very beginning. These are some of the examples that so far Spinova has been able to bring to the market for the consumers so that we can really um, uh, get the feedback also from the real consumers. So with this, I would like to um, end the presentation of Spinova but uh, feel free to get any question. Yeah.